Hello everyone, and welcome back to CWC 2024. This is gonna be our qualifiers map pool showcase. We are going to have, um, we're gonna have nine maps in total, and we plan for it to be the same way it was done last year. So if you do have any questions regarding how qualifiers are done, please feel free to check the wiki. But without any further introductions, I think we can jump right in with Nomad 1. Hey, you gotta introduce me first. Wait, there's another commentator here? Yes, sir. Whoa, who is this? I think you should introduce yourself first. Not Maybe not everybody knows your voice, Mr. www. Well, I am the advisor for CWC this year. And I am joined by the one and only captain of the USA team, Sekre CTV. Yeah, he says advisor, so if you have any problems, you know where to go. That's pretty much his role. Putting all the pressure on me right before we start the showcase, I appreciate that. Yep, exactly. That. Um, I think we can jump right in with Nomad 1. We're gonna have Camellia as our Nomad 1. Holly B as GB Speedrun with the amazing glitchless 100% world record. Yeah, seeing the Bunray map as a Nomad 1, this one does seem to be pretty long as well, at just over 4 minutes. Might be a little bit shorter in drain time based on the you know, difficulty name that we see there. But even then, still. Relatively long Nomad 1, which is, I'd say, to be expected at this point, especially for qualifiers. With the less amount of maps, we need to try and get as much data as we possibly can to best determine seating. And we are going to see slightly longer lengths across the pool as a whole. Just something that's expected out of qualifiers. To balance this, it is going to be more consistent to match in terms of both the spacings that are used and same with the stream shapes as well. You can see a lot of the kind of close wiggle stacks that you can stand along with like the single note notes placed within the streams to make it all nice and flowy. Yeah, this one overall seems like it's a relatively tame runway Nomad 1 map. It's a lot more similar to the one that we had last year for the qualifiers where it was just a very consistent check of consistency for the Nomad 1 slot in qualifiers. It's exactly what we want for that Nomad 1 slot. And pairing this with the song itself, there will be a few changes because of the song's length and it being Camellia, master of sound design. But relatively, we do want to keep it somewhat, somewhat tame for qualifiers. But we do get some funky sliders here, which are really fun to flow through. I really love the slider into the stack pattern. You know, I also see people in the chat saying no skin. Yes, sadly, we know that there is no skin, but it is unfortunately not up to either of us. But if you well, do really want a skin, please let it be known. Contact the organizers if you can. Make sure, you know, where the we're eating skin it. is definitely wanted at this point, for sure. We may or may not have something in the works. We're trying may our or best. May not. And over halfway through the map, things escalating slowly with a few turnarounds. Bursting into our PI section, we do kind of see some more hyper chains being used in the most intense part, along with some one note snaps. Just a bit of a spike in difficulty for the PI, as expected. Oh, I did see a little small wiggle there. I think that was like the first four note wiggle that we saw on the map. Taken. Yeah, it's mostly just been some turnarounds. Yeah, mostly triplets. This stream reminds me a lot of PA107. 
one of the greatest maps in the game. That's a good thing, you know? True. Kind of different variation of the section from earlier with the slider into the den stack. Breaking into a final solo here. Definitely going to be a big choke point with how wide some of those sliders are. But that is our kind of full flavor, no mod one. Jemzu no mod two, his slot. He owns I know somebody no wanted this. Um with Reboot code, I don't know how to say the title. But Jemzu is very well known for his Nomad 2s in terms of the technical ability that he implements in his maps. And that's something we're going to see very quickly with this one in terms of the stack shapes that he chooses to use with a lot of kind of quick standstills and more kind of precision wiggle abilities. I think is the best way to work it. Yeah, well, this one is about the same BPM as the last one, only a little bit higher, I think like four or five BPM higher. It definitely has more intense patterns overall. Like even these right there, those patterns with the verticals are a lot more challenging than they look. Definitely a lot more kind of stop and go motion than yeah. no mod one. This honestly isn't really a type of skill set that you see developed much at the lower star rating. Usually you see the skill set start to be developed at maybe around the low 7 stars, but here it is at approximately like 6.3. So, might be a little bit catching off guard some people if you're not too well versed on this kind of vertical type gameplay. But it should be a nice comfort pick for some of the higher seeded teams to be able to get a good score that separates them from the pack, I think. It was very intended to be a toy to Nomad 1. Nomad 1 having a lot of kind of freeform stream shapes with very nice flow, very kind of back and forth. Meanwhile, this one being more the epitome of that with a lot of stop and go motion. You know, I see Mario in, in the chat ask, is there finding Yoshis this year? And you need to answer that one. Oh, you need to get that out of the bag. What an amazing question. I will wait till the end of the map to answer that question. Oh, I see. Um, with this, with this final key at heart, we do see the streams increase in spacing quite a bit, and the turnarounds do become more intense. Mm -hmm. And the wind down section also helps to give a bit more score if you manage to combo that amazing part, because that is designed to be the most difficult part of that map. Now for How the many most people do you think are going to miss that little burst at the end? I think there'll be a few. And as for finding Yoshis, and I'll say this again at the end, we are still doing the Finding Yoshi minigame. It's now integral to CWC. But Let's with go. the caveat of now, it will not be shown in the showcase streams. So you'll now have to actually look for it when you're playing. That way people don't find it immediately and actually have to look. Yeah, that's pretty fair. I will say that one more time. Now, we have our singular convert, also FA. I'm E with Egoist, one of their more popular tracks. Definitely wanted to go with something more jumpy to have it stand out from Nomad 1 and Nomad 2 in terms of the very kind of tight turnaround edge dashing, where you'll jump from a hyper to a normal note, and then you'll have to dash back really quickly. Just give me a check right here. I don't see it on the stream, so do you know which approach rate this is, actually? Um, yes, this is 9.3, so it's lower than Nomad 1 and Nomad 2. Okay. Yeah, this With one it. also relatively long as well, with four minutes. Definitely a lot of patterns that can look intimidating. 
with it being a convert, but you can glide through a lot of these. It's very easy to cut through, flowing really, really well. Not anything too crazy like micro wiggles, mainly just jump. A bunch of varying forms of jump. Yeah, and I think this kind of convert is pretty much what you would expect out of the soul convert in you know CWC I think at this point something that has a good mix of jumps while also ha having some, some more technical streaming patterns like the ones that you just saw it about Halo combo Definitely a choke point with the cross scream into the ki. Eye. But even with the few choke points that this map does have, they're not too brutal, which is something we do look for. We don't want there to be a pattern that is too out of place that makes everyone drop. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that's probably the hardest part about pulling these converts in general, is making sure they got a little bit of funk to them, but not too much funk to them, you know? That's a good way to say. Bit of a slow down part here with some combo that's generally easy to get. Just a bit of back and forth. into our final key eye here. Right after a short intermission before being blessed. And a final little death stream. Yeah, that stream kind of goes hard, no? It's inspiring my next map in this very moment. Oh, no. It's supposed to sound happy. I don't know how you can make something like that on a culprit song, but we'll see. Hee <laughs> hee. Now moving on to Hidden. We have FB Fluorite Hidden 1 with um, with AR9, <clears throat> the kind of standard AR for Hidden 1s. This map in particular is going to be more so of a mechanics test with some slight density due to the Hidden, but still yeah, fairly this one also low. is going to be... It's also going to be CS 4.5 as well, so a little bit smaller than most people are probably used to for a qualifier's round stage at this point. Wanted to make something that wasn't too dense. Want to focus more on the aspect of playing a map with hidden rather than just making the hidden one feel really dense. If that makes any sense. Not to mention the songs, really. But... Yeah, that song actually is pretty good. It reminds me of VC Zuki a little bit. That's a good comparison. I have a few micro movements in this Ki for some of these sliders. Of course, oh, yeah, you can some choose. Of these you can choose to stand them if you dare. It'll just be a scary venture for you. As a PI progresses, there's going to be movement added. But still fairly basic in terms of the inputs that you need. It's just about combining that with the precision of CS 4.5. And being able to make those inputs at the right time. Yeah, and I noticed some of these dashes on the 1-4s are actually very far. Is what I'm looking like. It looks to be maybe like 
10, 15 pixels away from a hyper dash on some of them, which makes them pretty tight to actually catch, especially with it. Based off the first half, the second half is going to be very similar with a lot of the patterning that it does use. Don't want there to be too much variety in our hidden one. About to move away from the build-up part into our final key eye. Still very similar patterning to the first ki. -I. Things ramp up a tiny bit. Yeah, you see a few more hyper dashes in between the patterns, but the patterns themselves are actually about the same. It's just there's hyper dashes instead of dashes in between them. Ooh, that little triplet is gonna be. You're definitely gonna see a few misses on, misses on that one. Yeah, shout out to our replayer. And kudos to whoever can guess who made the replay. Honestly, a hard guess. I think there's like a decent amount of people who can still play this. I'll have to see if there's a spin. That's they're gonna be the telltale sign. Will there be? I knew the oh, answer. Oh no. Wahaha. <laughs> it was a spin at the intro, I think though. So I just didn't it see it. Moving on to Hidden 2 with the one and only Hidden 2 slot AFB Auto Fanboy with Cyclo wholeheartedly. Now one disclaimer for this track is while it's not on his featured artist listing, he got permission from the artist to use it. So shout out to Cyclo for that. Moving forward with this, a fairly standard AFB Hidden 2 map with the density in the low AR reading test. We can see a lot of these streams are fairly basic, more so encouraging short distances compared to Hidden 1. This is kind of the ploy to that, having such a different type of map in its opposing slot. Yeah, for reference, this one is going to be AR8 and CS3.8. Like you said, pretty standard all around the board. I mean, this one's pretty much like the, you know, you could say the successor to AFB's qualifier map from last year, Activism. It's actually, it's, wait, is that the same star rating as the last year one? I think it is. I'll have to check. 4.16. I'll have to ask AFB if he did that intentionally or not. One of the main gimmicks of this is going to be those long sliders that you have to dash through. Some of them will be hyper, and the other ones will just be very strong dashes. Yeah, being able to accuracy them seems like it might be a little bit of a challenge on those long sliders, like you said. Not walk distance, and it's I think it's like a little bit below full dash distance, so you have to have really good timing on it. Yeah, the CS helps to alleviate that a bit, to where it adds some leniency with hitting the note. But overall, that's a skill set that can be learned as you practice the qualifiers pool. All right, we have Date for Hard Rock One. This is a OG song for those that remember. I think the very popular standard set was ranked in 2014. Yeah, this song is honestly a banger. Yeah, Sakura, no. Oh gosh. Got this. Then Reed got it. 
Let's go. He did it. Let's go. This is going to be just base CS4, so CS5.2 with Hard Rock applied. Yeah, but I do have a question for you, Connor. Is you have a OD 13.4 map in the map pool showcase? What are you doing here? See, that's just for accuracy purposes. Oh, we're I gonna, see. Yeah, we're gonna scare off all standard players from the stream. That was the goal uh, of that. Standard player just get a jump scare, I guess. As intended. If you're unaware, OD does almost nothing in catch, and I'm pretty sure it's just a visual bug or some sort of, I don't know, but it's, it doesn't matter what the OD is. We'll get that fixed to you guys next week, where it'll show both the approach rate and circle size of the OD and HP. I believe OD is just for score. Yeah, yeah, this, only score. Yeah, this Hard Rock one is definitely planned to be kind of the equivalent of playing a map, kind of like a sort of PP map with Hard Rock apply. A lot of these patterns are things that you guys have seen before, and they are happening in a consistent and somewhat short duration um, with 1500 combo. This is a very consistent map where Hard Rock shenanigans will not mess you up. A lot of the hard rock movements are also very intuitive, and I think this part's a good example of that. Not a lot of delaying things might yeah, be on the other side like, of the screen. But yeah. yeah, it looked like most of the movements when you have a break were right on top of each other. So. Not that much memory, if at all, I don't think even needed for this. You just have to stay still when you hit a 1-1 break if it's not a hyper dash. And it should be fine from what I've seen so far. Have a bit of a vocal slowdown part with some nice sliders. Kind of a bit of a break since you've been BPM controlling for a lot of the map. Beautiful spin right there. Our replayer was too scared. Guess the replayer. I wonder with a name like that, I wonder who it could be. My guess is Yoshi Green. I guess would have been you yourself. I know you can do this. Oh, uh oh. One try challenge right after the showcase? No thanks. Oh. Coming into this, we have a lot more one off notes into hypers rather than things being conjoined. The movement's still, the sim still essentially the same, but with a bit more precision involved because of the higher end spacing. Yeah, some of these bursty 1-4 streams are a little precise, but nothing too egregious with the movement, I think. And there we go, that was our Hard Rock 1. Hard Rock 2 with the banger OG song. Leaf Eye, one of his most memorable tracks, being CS 4.4, so 5.72 with Hard Rock Applied. And this map definitely messes with SR a bit, because your eyes are not deceiving you. This is 7 stars. 7 star Reaper map in the ballparks? Oh boy. Seems very scary, but the with facings being far and the circles being just a bit smaller, it does inflate that statistic by quite a bit. You can see a lot of these streams aren't anything too mechanically demanding. Just a bit more precision added on top with the small circles. Map, it seems like it's a lot more vertical based than a lot of Reaper's other maps, for sure. I feel like the song influenced him definitely a bit on this one. Which is, it's nice to see, I think. Yeah. We have a bit of a speed up section here. 
but still, the mechanics aren't that demanding in terms of the spacing being super wide. It's known what's expected of your inputs, which I think is the important part with this map. Yeah. Heading into a fairly basic section with some really nice sliders. I love that slider a lot. Got a bit of turnarounds. Still a very BPM control type of deal. And remember, these movements are only about 140 BPM, so it's not too high. I assume most players who are looking to get a decent score in Qualifier should be able to play this. Relatively would be on the future control parts. So I hope after seeing this, the SR isn't too scary. The rhythm's also manageable, and we see some wide spacing here. But nothing too daunting if yeah, stacks definitely. don't scare you. All right. DT1. I'd first like to point you out to the amazing background drawn by Dika while also being mapped by Dika. A dual talent, you could say. This you is know, it's kind of insane that I mentioned Rizuki earlier in the cast, and here we are. For I had, as long as this is DT1. I had to bite my tongue really hard. Oh, yeah, I can imagine. This is definitely our speed and consistency test with a vanilla AR of 8.8. .8. Things not being too dense either with a lot of one half sliders and basic triples with a bit more jump based in this PI section. Song's just peak music. Peak. Perfection. I agree. I'm going to need to message Dika right after this and ask him if I can GD. That is a definite answer for me. I'll be in. No words. Yeah, like you said, this seems mostly relatively standard. There was a little bit of a one-third section there. Some one-thirds mixed in here, it looks like, or maybe just three-fourths. Can't tell for sure. I believe it to be three-fourths. Yeah. It makes more sense with the song structure, I think. And we do have a bit of a solo here, but still nothing too deviating with the flow. We are still aiming for consistency here seeing how well players can hold on with double time. A key change that encourages wider spacing, the hyperspacing increases here, which is a bit noticeable during playing, just something to stay prepared for when you make it to this point of the map. of intensity with that solo there. Yeah, well, like you said, all pretty much flow, so nothing to really catch out too much. It's a good overall consistency check for the DT1 slot. Alright, and we will be moving on to our final map of our qualifiers to DT2. Horizon Blue. Amazing song. Mapped by Ken. Definitely going to be a bit more precision based with CS 4.3 and the AR being 8.3. So definitely more dense compared to 
DT1. And a bit more stream based as well. Yeah, this one definitely looks to be a step up in difficulty from the last one. But like I said, the lower approach rate should make it more accessible, I think, for some of the players who are a little bit weaker on the higher AR. It definitely, this one definitely looks really different. Wow. It looks. I feel that, especially in this environment, it looks more technical than it is with a lot of the distances of these streams being very short based. I mean, even just, then, just the snaps overall, back and forth, seem to be pretty abundant. Yeah, I think the main deal is being able to snap to a kind of walk based stream by using dash and then having to let go and then tap dash again. So the dash usage for this will be really high. Yeah. The flow is not really that daunting, it's just a lot of control. And that is something we did want with this map. To kind of reward players who do have proficiency in the mod. That's kind of been the goal for these two slots with like Hidden 2, Hard Rock 2, and now Double Time 2. For sure. Reward players with the proficiency who can rise above and do something a little bit harder than the consistency. This is a banger song, though. I was waiting for somebody to map this. Absolutely amazing. I'm surprised you didn't do it yourself, honestly. I'm a two-trick. What can I say? Right. You're right, you're right. <laughs> and all right. That will do it for our qualifiers map pool showcase. I'll say this again once more. We still are doing the Yoshi background game. It will just not be shown in showcases to cause players to look and kind of create a more rewarding experience. We are still going to be doing qualifiers the same way we have been since last year with the percent max system. And all of the details for how qualifiers will be run will be included on the wiki page. Maps should be being uploaded as we speak pretty much right now. I know some of them are already uploaded. So if you want to go play them, go check out the catch pending section. The map pool will be updated on the wiki very soon, whenever that is available, sometime later today. And of course, we are going to get those out as soon as possible. Yep. Please do not hesitate to reach out to any of the higher ups in the Discord server if you have specific qualifier questions or needs and i think that wraps it up for us yeah it's already over 34 minutes nice and done quick qualifier showcase for you guys so happy to be back for another amazing year i can't wait for you guys to see what we have in store good luck with oh, yeah. seating and soon we will be getting to our prediction stream do you want to talk a little bit about that second? yeah so after this in approximately 25 minutes from now, we're going to be hosting a prediction stream with myself and a few of the other casters. And that is going to be hosted, I think, on Custom Olusu channel on Twitch. I'm not too sure exactly where it will be hosted. I think it'll be there. But either way, I think Host Live will host the channel when it is going live. It's going live in 25 minutes or so. Make sure you are there for a nice little fun prediction stream. Sudi Fruity coming back again this year. The Discord should also get pinged, so don't be scared yep. if you don't know how to find it. Exactly. Hopefully we see you all soon. Bye-bye.
Hello everyone, welcome to this first stream after the Qualifier Mapu Showcase. We're here for the Qualifier results, the sittings, and the round of 32 Mapu Showcase. I'm Real Mas and I'll be casting this with Sekri and Maito. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. hello. I knew that we both do that. Yep, it was gonna happen, it was bound <laughs> to happen at some point. But here we are, we're gonna be showing you guys some nice seedings today. And for a quick little reference, all three of us, we're going in completely blind on this. We don't even know yep. what's gonna happen on these seeds. So hopefully yep. we get to see some spicy action in these seedings. Yeah, we'll be reacting just the same as you. All the viewers watching along, it's going to be so exciting. Uh, one of my favorite part of streams to do to see how everyone um, fared in the qualifiers pool. It is finally time to see, and uh, well, I guess we're going to get into it. Yep. So, as a reminder, only the top 32 teams make it this year. And we're going to start with the lowest seed, which is Bulgaria, sitting 35 this year, and unfortunately, not qualifying. Yeah, a bit unfortunate that they did qualify pretty much every single map at number 35. But there, again, there's always got to be some teams that are sadly not qualifying for the World Cup. Yep, yep, that is how it goes. And uh, yeah, that 35th place, you know, not too bad. It's uh, pretty pretty far off in terms of the scores and everything from qualifying. So unfortunate Bulgaria, but um, of course, good luck next year. Um, hopefully yep. you keep gunning for that spot. And also, one more quick thing to mention, we did have 36 teams sign up for the World Cup this year, but unfortunately one team couldn't quite make their qualifiers, they didn't have the full roster available for this weekend, which was Hong Kong. So, quick shout out to Hong Kong, at least they got a team that registered, they're ready to play, but unfortunately they just couldn't make it to their qualifier match. Yep. Yep. Unfortunate there, but it happens sometimes. Um, in any case, moving on to the 34th seed, it's going to be Austria, um, who I didn't, I don't think even uh, tried to qualify last year, so at least having a crack this time, but unfortunately, um, yeah, most mostly number 30, like 4 and 33, and just not quite e evening out enough to get that 30 second spot. Yeah, it's their first operation since CWC 2020, so it's their first roster in the last four years which is something they can already be proud of unfortunately did not did not quite make it but uh, it's getting there it's close to 232 honestly i think there was a lot of discussion about, about which teams would be around that 31 to 35 range because it's very close in there but unfortunately Australia not making it this year and yeah we'll move on to seed 33 then C33 going to be the last team that is sadly not going to be making it, and it's going to be Singapore. Oh, Singapore. this one is a bit of a shocker. Wow, that is that is unfortunate. I'm feeling for my Singapore boys right now, just missing out on that 32nd place. Such heartbreak before the tournament even gets underway, of course. And yeah, Singapore not going to be. I'm um, qualifying, which of course means that uh, I think most people in the chat know that some teams that are coming in this year are going to be qualifying, which yep. is at least a positive thing to think about. Um, <laughs> but yeah, just just missing out. Uh, uh, commiserations, of course. Yeah, um, unfortunate. Last year they did not make it as well, so this year either. Hopefully they can rebuild the team ever since pretty much Heong left, I think. It's been yeah. kind of tough for Singapore. But uh, yeah, on to 32 then. Seed 32 going to be 30 second seed qualifying. It's going to be Estonia. They're going to have the nightmare matchup of playing against the seed number one in the first week. The matchup oh. that you know nobody oh really wants to have, but it's got to happen at some point. Yep, that is the 30 second seed there. Congratulations, finally. Um, well, I guess I'm not. I'm not sure how many. Um, times they've, they've assembled a team in the past to try and get in, um, to be honest, but didn't last year. It's, it's their second while. participation since 2014, actually, the first yeah. participation in 10 years, and they made wow. it, which is great for them. 
Yeah, great, great, great. Then congratulations, Estonia, making it in. And um, yeah, some. I think that DT1 score was their most uh, most impressive uh, performance, kind of getting them over the line, I suppose you could say. Yeah, really? especially with the percent max. Yeah, true. Which is pretty impressive because usually I would say that lower seeded teams kind of struggle with picks like this one maybe because of the AR and stuff, but Estonia did quite well despite having... I mean, they have a three core of three digits and I guess that worked for them, so... Good, good, good. Yep. Moving on to seed 31, it's going to be Malaysia. Last year, missing out pretty closely and this year they finally sneak in at that 31st seed. Um, definitely aided um, by those DT1, Hidden 2, and No Mod 3 scores, which uh, kind of propelled them in because Hard Rock was um, not their best. <laughs> yeah, a little bit lower on the placings for Hard Rock, which is a bit surprising. Usually you'd see, you know, teams get somewhat average placings on the Hard Rock rather than the DT1, for mm -hmm. example. But I guess this year we're seeing a bit higher average on the DT1 scores, which is going to show. The map was pretty comfy overall, I think. Yeah, I would say so. Last year they did not make it, so this year I think they're quite happy to have made it. And it's great to see that for them. But uh, moving on to seed 30 then. It's going to be Iceland, the crowd favorite. Iceland is going to be making it at seed 30 this year. The question was, who was going to qualify? Or were they going to qualify even? And they did make it at seed 30, which is amazing for them, honestly. Wow, look I at those, those hidden, hidden scores. scores. <laughs> the the Elux boot camp for hidden Damn. worked out. No way. That is crazy. Those are some pretty impressive scores considering the uh, history and kind of like, yeah, quick, quick assembling uh, of this team. The, the, the slow, I guess there was some good slow training up kind of their training arc before the qualifiers and look where it's got them seed number 30 that's crazy and yeah people were talking about like if you're good at hd it can really really carry you in qualifiers and that's absolutely what happened there they i think the lower ranked icelandic players just tried really hard on hd and it paid off sure for sure again huge congratulations i know ash is sitting here right now he's so happy yep Yep. You've got to be, you got to be happy for the whole Icelandic team because it's kind of like the dream team miracle run a bit for them. Yeah, I'd definitely. Say. The lowest population country to ever qualify for a World Cup, he said. Uh, so that is very, very, very impressive. And of course, congratulations. Um, we're going to move on now to the next seed, which is going to be number 29. It's Latvia. Making it in as well. Going to be uh, the no mod scores actually this time um, that are a bit higher than the rest of their mods and kind of get them all the way to this 29th placing. Yeah, we yeah, see this... a pretty big trend with the no mod 3 being the highest score for pretty much every team so far. And that's kind of what you would expect for the convert with the lower seeds, is that it's going to be the highest score. But even then, 24 compared to the 27 and 28 for the rest of the maps, it's pretty good. Yep, and it is Latvia's first qualification in CWC, so congrats to them. And yeah, good job. I think a lot of people were not expecting Latvia to qualify, it's, I think in predictions and everything. But they did make it and quite far actually in the seedings, so it's great to see. Uh, moving on then yep. to seed 28, it's gonna be New Zealand. Uh, sitting a bit lower than last year at 28, but still it's that uh, 25 to 32 team that we know is the same core as last year and pretty decent performance across the board, especially HD again, I think kind of carried their placements here. Yep, absolutely. Um, yeah, Hidden, Hidden really, really helping some teams out that maybe struggle a bit more on some certain other mods, uh, especially double time here for New Zealand you can see is kind of a weak point there. Um, no mod and hard rock kind of just what you would expect. But yeah, Hidden, especially that low AR uh, Hidden, Hidden 2, really, really um, pushing them much further 
than if they were just kind of standardized out throughout all of the mods, dropping a bit of placing, but qualifying nonetheless, and that is, um, that is still a win in their books, I think. Yep, for sure. But, um, the next seed, moving on now, is going to be Turkey. They have jumped up significantly now, not even qualifying last year, but all the way to seed 27. Yeah, we see they actually have some pretty decent hard rock and DT scores compared to the other teams where we had the other teams being good at hidden with kind of weaker hard rock and DT scores. Turkey is the exact opposite where they're really weak at hidden it seems, but their hard rock and DT was the ones that got them over the line this year. Yeah, it's truly I think the, the top uh, Turkish players like Laura maybe some improving a lot this year and just raising the skill ceiling of the team really helped them a ton and looking forward to them in the round of 32 because I think they can take a map a match maybe in in this tournament but yeah moving on to Swiss 26 it's gonna be let's see <laughs> dot 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 it's coming Suspense. there it is <laughs> there it oh. is Denmark actually in 20, C26, maybe it's not something that people would have expected. Way, way, way lower seeding than last year. And maybe a, a bit of a letdown, maybe compared to, some, to what some people would have expected. Yeah, you look at this roster and they kind of have a lot of experience with Kara and Captain being. I think they've been around for several years at this point, if I'm correct if I'm wrong. But. Yeah. A bit surprising to see. I think it's probably just mostly the loss of Sharp End being the main yeah. downside, as you can see from the seeding going down by that many places. Yeah, I was going to say that um, that loss of, of Sharp End, the, the, the captain last year, is a pretty big hit. And um, well, when you lose one of your one of your best players, it's obviously probably going to take. Quite a bit of a hit to your to your to, to your placing as well. Um, pretty good scores really across most mods. DT I think being their weak point a little bit. Um, actually, no mod again. Uh, 24 and 25 on number one and three. So those kind of helping out. Um, but in any case, congratulations still for qualifying Denmark. And um, we're going to be moving on now to the 25th seed which is going to be Thailand getting the exact same placing as last year. Well, yeah, it's the classic uh, Thailand squad with a lot of the four, the fake four digits, pretty much. They <laughs> a lot in tournaments. So a lot of these guys have actually quite a lot of, a lot of experience. And the seeding will be the same as last year. Nothing too surprising, I think, for anyone. They were kind of expected to be around here. Um, nothing really too uneven, really decent, no but two scores especially, 20 on that, yeah. but other than that, pretty even scores. Yeah, I think pretty much the Nomad too is I think that really sticks out to me is that they had a 2.55 million, which is I think just about like 850,000, something like that, per person, which is honestly really good, especially on the map that was, I'd say, that mechanically challenging. Yeah. Mechanically challenging. Very hard overall to be able to get a score like that. It's very good. Yeah, absolutely. And um, yeah, these these Thai boys. We're going into a little bit of a break here, but I still will discuss. Um, I, I I I have good hopes for them to 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 do some nice stuff. Uh, of course, yeah, having having the kind of fake four digits, but. Um, nonetheless, you know, you, you see those you see those four digits. Uh, maybe isn't kind of outside observer not really knowing knowing them too well and thinking how the hell did they just like get C25 against some other teams that have some three digits in them but uh, <laughs> Easy S and, and Gilbert and, and, and Big Kungs and basically all of them really Zero Kungs uh, are punching way above their weight in terms of in terms of their ranks so it's nice to see them here again and uh, it'll be good to see how they do in the rest of the tournament so good luck of course for that yep so after that, moving on to 24. 
It's gonna be Vietnam. Once again, a team that places way lower than last year. Even though I think the team didn't change that much from last year. But it's gonna be quite a lower seed. They still make it. Top 24 is not that bad. Uh, again, very even scores actually. You look at the, every map and it's kind of all around the same. Maybe a bit of struggle on the convert, which is kind of surprising. But uh, yeah, a bit of a lower seeding from what you would expect, maybe from Vietnam. Yeah, it's an yeah, interesting overall, seeding there. Yeah, sorry, you I got. I mean, it. to be fair, this is the last year's placing and not necessarily the seeding. Last year they did oh, seed yeah, in twenty second. So it's not that much lower. They ended up just having a nice run last year with winning a match. So I'd say this is pretty much okay for them at this point. Maybe a little bit higher you could have expected, but I'd still be you know pretty happy with that. Especially you see yeah. Nomad One, right? That's a really high score for Nomad One at 21st. That's 2.76 million. That's literally 920,000 points per member. Like those are good scores. 920k. Yeah, shows how high the competition is this year on the qualifiers. Yeah, absolutely. And um, yeah, that's, that's a great score there, of course. Um, Hard Rock 2 and, uh, and 1. Hard Rock 2 was kind of, I think, maybe... It was discussed quite a bit as being a bit of a funny map. Um, but they, they've definitely performed well there. Actually, Hidden 1 as well. They, they, they've, they've got a few... Scores that are kind of creeping into that, yep. um, into that next range, but twenty-four still respectable Vietnam, and uh, going to be moving on now to C twenty-three, which is going to be Spain. Yeah, Spain having an absolutely massive hidden two score. You can see right off the bat there, Whoa. number seventeen on hidden two. Oof. That's pretty good. Especially when you're seeding number 13, or 23, sorry. And pulling out that score with this roster, I think not many people expected them to seed probably this high at 23. Maybe people were expecting between like 26, 27, something like that. But getting up into the low 20s, very nice for them. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you go, Realmus. Yeah, I was saying, I was about to say, A means are previously known as Sprint, I believe. Improving a lot this year and being here for the team is actually, I think, making a big difference for this year's seeding. Actually, it's, it's quite surprising that they seeded this high, in my opinion, because you look at the players and you maybe see a lack of a third, maybe, here on a pool this hard, but... I mean, then I guess we're wrong, because you can't get that high scores without the solid third players and qualifiers, so even on a pool this hard, they... Played really well and congrats to them for that seeding. Yep, absolutely. And um, going to be moving on now to the next seed, number 22, the Netherlands. Um, a pretty scary matchup, kind of looking at it on paper here, but um, actually seeding higher than they did last year. I'm not sure exactly um, on what team, but placing uh, com compared to their placement a little bit lower. Yeah, last year they had a huge upset against Indonesia, which made them place, I think, a little bit higher than oh, that's what right. people expected that's them right. to do. But yep. this year they have bads back in for the qualifiers, and you can see the effect that that has immediately with the Hard Rock. Bads being one of the best players, in my opinion, at being consistent. Seems like they don't have that good of a low, age, low AR hidden roster, or even just a hidden roster at all. But those Hard Rock scores, 2.7 mil each, very good for them. Yeah, that's great. Even like the number two score as well. Yeah, point seven mil, great score. But yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be good for Netherlands. See what they will be able to do in the first stages of the tournament. Because even if the qualifier results are not the greatest, I think this team is gonna be like last year, very scary in the early rounds. Yeah, it does seem like that. They they look kind of um scary. I mean, you know, there's we, we've kind of got. Some of our, I think, one of the first rosters with two, two digits, um, yeah, in there. So, so um, yeah, I'm, I've said on paper like five times now, but I can't think of another phrase. Um, <laughs> they, they, they look like they could have another deeper run than than their qualifiers would kind of 
um, extrapolate them to to do so let's see i guess but anyway congratulations uh, nonetheless netherlands on uh getting in yet again this year and we're going to be getting into the next seed which is going to be the philippines wow might be the biggest drop off we've seen i mean it was to be expected given it was. the roster change yeah. only kiazu sitting in from the legendary six of philippines it's a whole new philippine roster and honestly, for their first showing, I think it's pretty good seeding 21 in a fairly competitive uh, mid-range with a lot of teams who can perform at this range. I think it's pretty yeah. good. A lot of these players don't have necessarily a lot of tournament experience, I believe. They can be happy about that. And look at the scores. There's one score sticking out extremely <laughs> hard in here. No, nope. That is yeah. crazy. <laughs> Yeah, HD2. Hey, you can, they can play low AR hidden, that's for sure. Yeah, they can play that, they can play that. Whoever they're that's playing against next week, hey, I'm sorry, but you know what to ban, just saying. Yeah, I was about to say, whoever's playing against Philippines needs to ban that low AR immediately. <laughs> because... Yeah, it's not even a question that, at that point. That has really, um, like, dramatically helped their seeding here. Wow, I'm actually, like, looking at these, it kind of looks like they should be, they should be even higher, but I guess... Kind of uh, that those two 23s uh, and 22s kind of balancing it out yeah. um, a little bit. But yeah, wow. That really, really impressive performance performance on on that hidden. And of course, double time as well, actually um, being quite a nice pull for them too. So yeah, the biggest drop off, as I said, but I meant just purely in terms of the numbers. Of course, I think yeah. everyone expected this compared to their roster last year. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. But still, pretty good. Gonna be moving on to seed 20. And it's gonna be Norway, actually. Norway, I say, is, is kinda surprising, but Norway is one of these teams that's really good early and then kinda starts to fall off around mid late. But still, 20 is nothing to scoff at. Pretty good performances all around, especially good HR1 score at rank 14. Overall, no apparent big weakness. Yeah, last year they came in seeding at approximately 18th last year. Won a match, so they got bumped up to the 13th bracket of wins. But yeah, honestly, overall, very solid scores throughout the board. See the Hard Rock one sticking out just a little bit over there with about 910,000 points each from every member. So, very well played to them. Gonna have a interesting first week matchup, I believe gonna be like what c 11 or something no something yeah something like that i see 11 or 12 that they're gonna be playing against yeah. yep yep that is that is i think it's yeah i think it's 11. Um, i can't do the math in my head right now <laughs> me neither <laughs> me neither to be honest um anyway um good job again of course um no way uh look out for these guys, I think they can put on some underrated performances as well, to be honest. Um, and moving on to the next seed, it's going to be Australia uh, dropping a little bit in seeding. And I guess I can give some some context to this one as well. Um, of course, losing Easy Gun um, was a was a pretty pr pretty pretty big hit to this team. But we have got some. Um, really strong players still here too and nando actually wasn't present for these qualifiers so that was a bit of a drama that happened with australia uh nando not being there was pretty significant uh honestly unfortunately um but in any case i think at this seating might might be seeing a few a few upsets possibly yeah, but I would say that seeding 19 for a country like Australia is really not, not ideal because you're going to be facing like, yeah, seed 12, 13, maybe. Yeah. And it's going to be a tough first round for them. I think it's a team that w really wants to win round of 32, but now it's going to be quite a tough matchup. But uh, other than that... Yeah. And I, um... I, I still think it's... Doing that well without Chicken Nondo is still good, honestly. Because they, yeah. they can do better, for sure. So look out for yeah. them still. 
yeah, having Beerus back definitely helped them with that with that Nando absence, and he's been popping off recently. So I'll be excited to see how the how the Aussie boys do this year with ticks coming in as well. Um, but of course, we have to move on. Have to keep going, and the seed eighteen is going to be Ooh. Germany. Wow! 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 Yeah, this one is a, another big drop off that we saw this year. They're not having a few of their members from last year. No Corey being the very obvious big one that they don't have. They also don't have Lume, who was one of their premier players from last year too. So they lost two very big names this year. They still pulled out some pretty decent Hard Rock and DT scores, but their low AR hidden, their convert, not really keeping up to pace with the rest of the maps, it seems. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it's I would say it's one of the most polarized results from map to map. You have like 8 to 23 pretty much, which is a lot. And it shows that it's a team that has defined strengths and weaknesses, which is not really good to know for the other teams because you kind of know what to abuse against Germany, I guess. But uh, yeah, I don't know how they feel about this, but uh, losing a lot of strong players is always a tough process for a team. Hopefully they can still manage and they can definitely have a run in the bracket though, I think. So we'll see what yep. Germany has in store for us. I think so too. And um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how they got on this year with, with, with the loss of a few powerful players. Um, but yeah, uh, congratulations still for, for seeding Almost getting into that kind of high high area. Um, will be interesting to see how they yep. go. But the next seed, moving on, is going to be Mexico. Yet again, uh, another team that has kind of fallen in a predicted way. Um, and uh, I guess really helped by their kind of hard rock two score there i think every other score is pretty consistent honestly dt being a bit of a weak point um but yeah mexico definitely not um the the team last year that was that was assembled yeah they're losing pretty much half their team from last year only if you're in cx lucha are the ones coming back this year it's kind of crazy because i remember mexico used to be a really good dt team way back in the day, yeah. like a few years ago even. And now you see their DT is the lowest score, which, I mean, it just goes to show how much things can change within just a couple of years. Absolutely. Yep, but um, still getting in with a respectable placement, and I think, um, yeah, th th they'll still go well this year. Not quite the really strong team they were last year, but it'll be good to see... Um, how they how they get on regardless and um yeah seeing seeing excellent in here is 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 cool to see as well actually a few there's two four digits uh, making it in as well yeah and after this one i believe we're going to be having our first confirmed matchup of the week next week mexico is going to be playing against oh. seed 16 which is going to be the next one and that's going to be the united kingdom so there you go that's the first matchup of the week mexico True. versus the uk that's a good Please thing confirm. to point out. Yeah, yeah. The, the, all the next seeds are going to see who's playing, who's playing who. I actually didn't think about that. Yeah. Um, so, getting even more exciting here. The UK, they've assembled a really nice roster, I think, this year. Getting that number seed, uh, number seed, num number 16 seed, um, really helped. As you can see, I think there's one glaring map, and it's Hard Rock 2, the sixth place on that. 2.8 million, almost getting to 2.9, actually. Yeah, and still not top five. That's that shows how good the top teams were on this pool, honestly. But yeah, it, I mean, UK Mexico is a very interesting matchup because UK is definitely a rising country in the past few years, and Mexico Mexico is kind of falling off, and it's kind of the old versus the new. So it's gonna be very interesting to see. Quite an unusual matchup. But uh, glad these guys made it, made it to top sixteen. And we're going to be moving on to the top 15 team. Right above UK. 
And which is Taiwan, interestingly enough, this year. Uh, Taiwan had quite the roster change this year. They dropped uh, two of their best players in ZX and Bipu. And it kind of shows on the qualifier results, honestly. With dropping a lot of placements compared to last year, I believe, where they seeded, they seeded 10 last year. So it's definitely a noticeable dropout. But uh, other than that, pretty pretty good HD scores and no mod especially, but a bit of a struggle on DT and HR. Yep, anything to to say here, Sekre? Yeah, um, Dota Webby also had the number one score on Hard Rock 1 overall, which is something pretty good from him at least. I know he's coming in with a bit of a different roster this year as of previous years. A lot of new faces on this roster, so we'll see if he can be that, you know, sort of veteran presence on the team. And I mean, the score so far, he's placed 19th, I think, in overall performance throughout every single player in the qualifiers. So doing yep. that on C15 is pretty good, I'd say, overall. Yeah, really strong player there, and uh, one to look out for in terms of carrying some um, some close points through, I think. Um, but in any case, good job, Taiwan. C C15, very respectful, uh, respectable. Sorry, um, and it's going to be the next seed now, number fourteen, Sweden, the Swedish boys. Getting into this high seed range uh, really helped out um, by that hidden two score again. Wow, hidden two Damn. for some Oof. of these teams. Number three That's getting crazy. the podium on that map. That is a fantastic performance uh, for these players here. Wow, low AR. That is the ban against against Sweden here. Um, <laughs> yeah, that, that is crazy. Yeah, that's like 975k yeah, average for player, which is... That's two misses, by the way. Yeah, that's almost nothing. Two misses between the team. Yeah, but Sweden gaining strength as the years go, honestly. I think uh, the addition of uh, Shami Maru, I believe, this year... Uh, he was there last year, but improving a lot this year helps definitely a lot, and you have some of the old players who are still good on... A lot of stuff. You can kind of tell that there are a lot of old players in the team by the Nomad 3 core, which is oh, something yeah. that old players tend to favor a bit more. Don't look at it too hard, you'll see something that you don't want to see. Oh, oh no, I saw, I, I saw it. Yeah. You got me uh, that one. Why do yep, they have to okay, do this to us? Okay. Why did you have to say No it? one was even talking about it. <laughs> Oh, you know, boy. I blame Rio Mas for pointing out Nomad 3, okay? That's, uh, that's his okay, fault. Okay, okay, I'll take it. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. And um, that's also the the matchup against the Aussies um, as well. So, um, interesting to see. Interesting to see that, um, for sure, how these two teams compete against each other. Yeah, it could um, definitely be a close one. Yeah, I think it'll be a good match for sure. But... Um, Moving on now from Sweden is going to be Indonesia. I'm um, getting the exact same seed as their last, uh, as last year's placing. Um, a pretty solid team, honestly, really here, yeah, and yet again hidden that we've seen quite a bit helping them dramatically. Yeah, for sure. It's going to be a theme, right, in the last few teams. Very solid HD scores. You can tell that the HD1 scores and HD2 scores are very different, though. You can see that 2.7k, 2.7 mil, I mean, is top three already. Yeah, that's really surprising to me because usually you'd see a 2.7 mil and that'd be like maybe around six or seven or eight. Yeah, that's what But the, yeah. actually not, not even, even lower than that. Usually it'd be around 10. But this year, Hidden One seems like it was really hard for a lot of teams, and honestly, it was definitely pretty hard. But still getting top three on that. Remember, it is percent max, so it's mostly about how good the top team did, and then everybody gets a portion of that based on the score that they got as a team. Mm. Yep. So, still two more teams mm. higher than 2.7 mil, which is still pretty good. But, I mean, hey, these scores all alone, except for, you know, the DT1, which. We'll just label it as a, maybe a DT1 incident as well as a Hard Rock 1 incident. It's still pretty good. Yeah, the the incidents. Just label label them as that and move on. <laughs> don't don't think about it too much. Um, 
Yeah, hidden. Wow, that is... Uh, yeah, interesting to see, I guess. That, that map was definitely one of, the more, one of the more difficult, for sure. For, for most teams. And um, going to be moving on now past Indonesia to Belgium. They have dropped... Uh, actually, I'm not sure what their what their seeding was last year. I 14. think it was pretty similar. Yeah, 14. So actually getting a little bit higher higher this year. Um, Quinton back yet again with another strong team here. Um, really no outliers, uh, to be honest, in terms of the mod pools. Pretty consistent across all. Hidden a little bit stronger than the others. Um, but no real big weaknesses. I guess you could say that maybe Hard Rock, um, Hard Rock 2 was kind of their worst, but Hard Rock 1 was still impressive. Yeah, honestly, just very overall solid scores. I mean, No Mod 3, a little bit hard for the convert, I know how it is, but still, just really good. And I mean, if they're only doing bad on No Mod 3, you can just ban the convert next week and then you're pretty much fine. You don't have to play that yeah. kind of map again. So, looking pretty good for the next week, if I say so myself, for Belgium. Yep. And yeah, when I think of Belgium, I think like a very balanced, solid team that doesn't surprise too much, but is always there and being good. And this is what they will probably do this year too. So after that, moving on to seed 11, will be China. And that's kind of a crazy seed. I don't know what you guys think about it, but I think it's kind of crazy. Yeah, I think last year they had... Um a pretty weakened um, team, I, I'm pretty sure, at least I remember, they didn't have their best roster together for sure, at least in terms of their really top players. Um, so it's good to see them back up here and competing kind of in the higher higher seedings. Um, and uh, really, again, wow, Hidden 2, man, is just being a carry for... <laughs> Uh, so many teams yeah. so far, yeah. They, these kind of these kind of high to mid, mid high high seed teams getting that second place on on hidden two two point nine mil. Yeah, only two misses again for that hidden two, which is very very impressive. That map definitely nothing to be slept on. I mean, if you can play lower or hidden, that's a very good sign for your team as a future because it's one of those skills that you kind of need to have, hard to learn really consistently. But if you have that, it's a nice little, you know, you can save something in your bag, I guess, that you can rely on for later rounds. Yeah, yep, absolutely. Yeah, Hidden hidden 2 this year is kind of crazy. Um, Sweden is the third, China's second, and we're not even in the top 10 yet. <laughs> so, um, very interesting. Uh, there is always that, kind of, that, that one map where certain teams, maybe a bit lower, can really latch on and uh, on, on, on a difficult skill set like low AR hidden. Um, so yeah, that, that, that has really propelled them here. Uh, and it's, uh, yeah, good, good to see, again, them, them coming back into the more top contention. Absolutely. Last year, their seeding was 29. So seeing the new generation Chinese players is, is great to see because after, you know, Dusk stopped playing, Calionet, Crystal, you know, the squad. So it's kind of hard to find new Chinese players, but it looks like they're starting to really, really do it, and it's great to see. Apparently, Nagi coached it in too. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you, Nagi. Oh. <laughs> you can always rely on Nagi. You but, see. Guys, it's time. It's the yep. top 10. Let's see who made there. it in. Gonna be Peru. Finally, we see them. There's been a lot of mention in the chat about how high Peru has been, and wow, um, some great scores here. Noma one, um, Hard Rock two, actually, and the, the DT pool really popping off there. Um, Hidden actually being their weak point this time, which we haven't seen for a bit. Yeah, this one I'm very, very happy. At least myself, I know this was kind of my dark horse prediction to have Peru placing high, and hey, they placed in the top ten. That's good enough for me. I am very happy for them. I know they've been playing a lot of community tournaments, they've been participating in the, I believe it's the, what is it, the, ah, uh, I forgot what it's called exactly, it's the kind of tours, or sketch tours, a lot of their players have been participating in tours, 
mm -hmm. and they've been doing consistently well in them. So it's good to see it materialize in this stage, at least with a nice placing for them in the seed. 10th, huge step up from last year. They placed 30th last year, so that's 20 whole places they won over. Yeah, absolutely. Really happy for them because these players have a lot of talent. Last year, watching Piero was kind of sad because they had these two really, really strong players. It was the Luna Tid and East Looks, I believe, being there last year. And they kind of didn't have a third. And it was really tough for them to play anything. But this year, they really assembled a really solid and pretty deep roster, honestly. And it's great to see that these players will really be able to, to shine and show how good they really are. Because some of these guys are really cracked at the game. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. This is a strong squad here, and it'll be great to see um, how they go in the tournament. Yeah, really getting a a, a, a solid um, core here this time, Peru. So um, congratulations, but that's it for the two digits. We're now into the one-digit seedings, and the first one of those, number nine, is going to be Russia. Jumping up um, quite a bit. From last year, actually, they uh, seeded all the way. Actually, well, they, they they seeded 12th well. last year, but last year was a bit of a um, bit of a funny year for them. Um, this is going to be Russia sixth, eighth, no mob one and two. Um, very consistent there, and really nothing. Too uh, inconsistent, except hidden, of course, which yeah. really held them back, to be honest. Yeah, you've seen very high HD2 scores, and in some of these top teams, HD2 is kind of the issue when you don't have a solid three man roster on low AR HD. That's what can happen, but still, it kind of hurt their seeding because otherwise, everything else looks really solid for them, honestly. But other than that, that's going to be Russia. After that, we're getting into the top eight. And you have all the countries in the top eight on the top of your head? Yep. I only have seven. I'm trying to think of the last one. Oh, Japan is going to be seed mm. eight this year. It's great to see. Yep. I, I don't think Japan has ever seeded this high in CWC or maybe a long time ago when like Iki AR was playing with Nora Arcot and these real old school Japanese players. But we're seeing kind of some new players in Japan becoming quite solid and being on the rise. And it shows on their performances all across the board. Yep, yep, definitely. Aisuke, um really, really stepping up a lot uh, in, in his skill. And he was in 4CWC not too long ago from my, from my memory as well. And has just improved skill massively. So that's kind of an individual individual performance that I'm I, I'm excited to see at least um, but yeah Japan seeding they seeded 15th last year so this is a huge jump for them and they are looking really promising this year honestly getting into that um, top seed range um, great to see for them yeah Malkus's I think they're going to be a, a very scary mid tournament team especially around that 9-12 range in placings Really gotta look out for them because they have some pretty consistent players sure. who are gonna play well. But that was the first country of the top eight. Moving on to seed seven then. Whoa, whoa. That's gonna be oh. Argentina. I think people would have been expecting them a bit higher. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. This is kind of a bit of a shock to me, to be honest. Um, people, at least in the prediction stream, thought um, that they would they they would at least place really high this year, maybe a podium finish even. Yeah. Um, so pretty great great scores, honestly, except for just DT and then that hidden two map, which held them back significantly from probably a a fourth or fifth place spot. Yeah, and what do you think about this one? The team with I think. Two of the three highest ranked players that signed up with Sir Gonza and Story. And Velpike as well at number 40. Still, even though he's one of the oldest players, I think that is participating in this World Cup. He actually might be one of the... He might be the oldest registered. I don't know, but... He's still got it in him, at least, but... 
you see these scores, the hidden, a little bit slacking on the hidden, but the hard rock and the no mod was still very good for them. Only a few misses on every single map, pretty much. Yeah, for sure, but uh, interesting. But don't be fooled by the seeding. I still strongly believe these guys can go very far in this tournament. They definitely have the raw skill and scaling to make it far. Yep. They have that they have that roster that just just looking at it, you know that they are gonna be one of the top contending teams this year and their seed not quite uh, reflecting that, I think. Just a little bit of a little bit of an inting going on possibly. Um, <laughs> um, but that that's it for seed number seven, Argentina going down there and it's going to be um, it's France in the sixth seed here. Um, doing very well from uh, from last year, I think. I think they, yeah, they seeded 17th. So this is a huge jump um, from the, from their previous performances. They have a really, really strong squad this year, friends. They are looking fantastic. Yeah, and they pretty much performed very well on everything. We see the first triple FC as well with the Nomad one, three FCs for every single member. It's only third too, by the way. That's the crazy thing is there were two other teams oh, at we're least outspun. that outspun them on triple FCs for Nomad. Oh, that's a good is, point. That's yeah, also wow. very crazy. I don't think we've had that many triple FCs on a map in qualifiers since qualifiers came out. So it just goes to show yep. they definitely pulled out the consistency for that one. Yeah, hit Nomad one, I think kind of, I think you kind of said is probably going to be that map at the more FCs. No mod 3, yeah. maybe the higher kind of average scores overall, but the less FCs, and you yeah. of, of course can see that reflected here. Um, yeah, the, the, the spinning, the spinners go crazy um, <laughs> for yeah. for this one for sure. Um, and yeah, the, the, those lower seeds really stealing Hidden 2 kind of out from underneath these, these more top-seeded teams. 14th um, here for France, which is interesting to see. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and the crazy thing about this, for me at least, is whoever is C3, they might have a bit of a hard matchup against France, because, I mean, they only really did bad on the lower yard hidden and the other hidden. Every other map was pretty much top six. Yep, like, yep. that's really good. If the only map you struggled on was lower yard hidden, you just ban it. Yep. No, I'm really happy about what the boys did, and... This year there was a lot of doubts about the roster because honestly a lot of these players are not really known in the tournament scene other than Electro and Olo maybe. Yeah. And so they had a lot to prove and I think seeding 6 is great, they did definitely prove why they're here and obviously I'm biased but hoping to see them go far in this tournament because I, I think they're kind of underrated and could go far. Oh yeah, it'd be honestly really cool to see France come back with pretty much a new roster except for Hollow from the old days when France was also competing for its top six places with Titovis and all those people. And seeing pretty much the new roster, like you said, it's going to be very exciting for them to see how far they can go this year. Yeah, this is a great, um, great resurgence this year for France and yeah, going to be awesome to see how they get on. But that is it for the sixth seed, the fifth is now going to be Chile. They have assembled another superb roster yet again here, the Chileans, um, getting all the way to fifth seed. And um, I think for fourth, four, fourth seed last year. And um, just another really solid roster again. I mean, how can you fault them? I think Nomod a little bit um, holding them back. I suppose Hard Rock and DT. Wow, look at those scores. Number two on Hard Rock one, DT one as well. Second place, and uh, uh, those 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 mod pools are going to be really scary to play against them. Yeah, for sure. We've always known Chile to be a great, great HRDT team. This year, proving the same. And I would say all these seedings from Chile are what we would expect from them. Consistently a very solid team, a top six level team. I think this year they also have what it takes to get there. And yeah, I think they can be happy about that and can have a deep tournament run. 
For sure, for sure. What do you what, what do you what do you think about this placing Secre? I think it's pretty much what you would expect from them. I think their nomad has been historically pretty weak overall compared to the other teams. But I mean that's something that you can kind of rely on your mods a bit more into the later brackets of the tournament to be able to do well on. You only need one really good nomad player for the mix mod, and even then, the no mod's gonna be easier on the mix mod later on. So, you can really get a buy with just being a really solid Hard Rock and DT team, which is pretty much what Chile is this year, seeding number two and number three overall on Hard Rock and DT. So, it's looking good for them, I'd say. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, mix mod is definitely a factor that maybe we're, uh, people aren't quite factoring into later performances in the tournament yet. Um, so. Yeah, that's that's a good that's a good that's a really good point to bring up to be honest because that was kind of lost from my mind as well. Um, yep. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see um, how these guys go as well. But we're into the top four now, uh, really getting into the top. Only a few left, and uh, these last couple of teams are just absolute monsters this year and that fourth seed belongs to Canada Whoa. oh boy wow. the top three is crazy I can't believe yep. this wow oh my yep. goodness Canada is the fourth seed here number one on Oma one by the way they outspun everybody else um what held them back I think it was just uh was hidden and maybe that hard rock two score as well yeah mostly just the hidden and hard rock two Hidden one, maybe some team did really good and the percent max got a little tanked, we'll have to see. But honestly, overall, very solid no mod scores from them. Very, very solid, just overall. I know this team is a bit different than last year. They don't have Henrik, Henrik being, I'd say, probably the biggest performer for Canada the last year. But they do have very healthy replacements. So Alvarez has gotten a lot better since the past year. DX Machina, otherwise known as Ymir, definitely stepped up their game. Red CXCA, the new player on this team, being able to fill in for the hidden, I believe, is what their main purpose is. And they definitely are showing that, you know, still doing a pretty decent job, even without their best player, Henrik, this year. Yep, yep. for sure, absolutely. And, um, yeah, really, really great seeding here, of course. I'm kind of a bit, bit less than last year, but regardless, still going to be one of the top teams uh, contending for a podium spot. And, uh, well, here we are, ladies and gentlemen, the podium seating yep. number three. Who's it going to be? It is. Is it going to be who we expect? Yes, it is yes, going to be, I is. think. <laughs> yeah, I think it is going to be who we expect. With Finland sitting third this year, and this is the strongest Finland has ever looked in any CWC by far. This year, a lot of the players improved. They got a couple switch-ups. Some players coming into play that absolutely add a lot to the roster and it absolutely shows in the results. No number one spot on any map, but number two on HD1, number two on DT2. Two very tough maps in the pool and overall just pretty good all around. Just one little incident maybe on HR2. Yeah, honestly these scores are very, very good for Finland. I mean, Finland... They seeded 16th last year, by the way. Yeah, this is crazy. To number to be three <laughs> is insanity. I know they had quite a big roster overhaul, which honestly, for the better, they have so many good players this year. They have the top six of Finland, just one, two, three, four, five, six, and that is definitely their best players. I mean, and, what an assembly of a of a team! Yeah. Like, wow, that yeah, the, the top six. I mean, holy, this is great to see. Uh, uh, Australian. Finland, definitely my top two Patriot teams this year. I hope to do, I hope to do well for sure. And yeah, it's just, it's great to see like a new face, I guess, in the in the top three as well. Kind of, we've had uh, a few like kind of big three teams throughout most years. Kind of US, South Korea, Canada, Chile teams, teams like that. But look at Finland go; they've they've really oh, yeah. jumped up and improved massively for here. Sure. So it's awesome to see. Um, and well, with that said and done, Finland out of the way into the top two teams here. It is going to be who probably we all expect Poland is going to be seed number two. Um, with really no surprises whatsoever. This roster is just, I mean, 
what what can you even say? I mean, they have some of the some of the best <laughs> players in this tournament right now, and just such a consistent and and powerful roster. Um, almost no weaknesses except for that hidden two, which I mean, like you know, that's kind of what is going to happen for most. Um, the thing the is, center. you look at Poland and you think, yeah. okay, they're a hidden team, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then you look at the score yeah. and then you're just like, wait, 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 hold up a second. How do they <laughs> do happens. 11th on hidden two? They have Bob and Trigon, who, in my opinion, are the two best hidden players that are currently in the tournament. Yeah, that's so, a really good point, actually. Yeah. It is a bit unfortunate. What did happen them. there? They could have. Nah, they probably couldn't have. I, I was going to say I mean, they could have snagged the number one. Difference but of no. third player. Yeah, I would yeah, say so. yeah. They don't really have a third hidden player, which is yeah, pretty much the kryptonite for this team at this point. Is that they really lack a third player for a lot of these mods. But it seems that their third player for the no mod and hard rock, hey, they can they know what they're doing. They were able to do pretty well on them. Number one on the hard rock one. So huge shout outs to Poland. I know they've been stressing out over qualifiers as well. So okay. probably a bit of a relief to see that they at least yeah. see the number two. They've done what they need to do. They've seeded number two. Um, they're going to be facing um, Malaysia. It was that they first seed. But, um, well, I guess I can say without further ado, we are at the end and it's the number one seed, everybody. Who will it be? Of course, it's the United States of America. They have finally claimed... Uh, back to back, actually, top uh, yeah, top back seedings back. here. I was, I, I'm gonna say, um, and wow, I mean, Jesus, look at those scores. Number one. <laughs> oh, I think that's. We don't, we don't uh, talk about the Hard Rock One incident, okay? What happened? <laughs> we don't talk about guys. the Hard Rock One. Seven number ones. What the hell, guys? What what what? <laughs> number two on No Mode One. I mean, geez, this is just complete dominance. I mean, this isn't even close to the rest of the other teams in terms of the, the, the performance on the maps. Number one on no mod, hidden, and DT. And uh, yeah, that Hard Rock 1 incident is... Um, well, there's always going to be an incident for the teams, isn't there? Yeah. That one was definitely... We were not happy about that one, to say the least. But the other maps, we were honestly very, very... Like, we were pleased with them. You know, hidden one, we... I'm looking at this now and I'm realizing that the difference between number one and number two on hidden one was like over 100,000 points. Same thing with DT2. And I mean, that's a huge gap, especially on the qualifier pool. To have a difference of over 100,000 points on a map, that's really insane. It's, the numbers don't even do it justice, which is the crazy yeah. thing in my opinion. You can look at the percent max and it's going to be even more outrageous, I think. Now, the question is... Last year, USA also got first on the seedings, I believe. This year, they can they transfer that number one seed into a number one placing? I think that's a big question for the US. I mean, that's I... pretty much the question of the year at this point. Yeah. Yeah. It's kinda yeah. That's the storyline of this tournament, to be honest. US have claimed number one. Can they get that uh, hugely sought after? top podium spot it's been such a long time coming and i think this is a hundred percent their best chance without south korea in the running and uh it's just going to be great seeing you guys compete and uh pop off like you always do and um go all the way and see um see see kind of it's it's great to also to see some new dynamics kind of in that in those top teams as well finland coming in some other resurgences from from in, into the top, like France. Um, so, it's just I, I'm so excited for this year's Catch World Cup. Uh, it's going to bring so much entertainment, so much. Um, hopefully, a few upsets as well. Um, I also but... want to say one more thing. Huge shout out to Lexi. Lexi was the number one performing player throughout the whole of qualifiers, and he averaged a 941k on every map. The second best average was FOB with a 925k, but he didn't even play every map. So Lexi playing every single map and averaging pretty much 20,000 points above the second best player statistically, That's, that is just a huge margin. So that is crazy. Shout out to Lexi for that. That's crazy. Yeah, great, great, great performances. 
Um, I mean, all that US roster is terrifying. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> uh, you scare me. You scare me. You guys scare me, to be honest. Um, but, well, I guess that's it. All of the scenes have been shown and everyone knows who they're facing. Uh, we didn't exactly talk about every single one, but I'm sure for those teams who did the calculations to see who your matchup will be, um, got some got some new great matchups this year. Um, going to be just fantastic to see yep. how that goes. Um, but that is going to be it for the for these seedings, and um, well. Now it's going to be the map pool showcase, so I'm going to be taking taking my leave, and I'm going to hand it over solely to you guys. Thank you very much for joining me. Thank you, thank you. Thank Always you, a pleasure Michael. to have you on. Yeah, I believe we're going to be getting started with the map pool showcase pretty much any second now. I mean, straight into it, pretty much just going right into it. I mean, hey, round of 32 map pool. You can expect the maps to be a little bit easier this week compared to the qualifiers of course qualifier is always going to be a little bit harder and we already have the first map this one's going to be days from Fuki. map by black bn air 9.2 cs 4.2 starting of just about 5.3 and hey look at this oh we got it look at it it's oh, beautiful i'm so happy about this i'm so happy about this uh, it thanks. actually happened it actually happened thanks everyone involved we actually have it Readable skin for CWC. Let's go. But uh, other than that, it's gonna be your number one. And this is just gonna be a consistency because you can kind of just see from the beginning of the map with very comfy mapping style, as you would expect. But one thing to note though, look at the star rating, and it's 5.37. Usually for round of 32, historically, maps have been way easier than that, so. This year we're going with quite a more difficult round of 32 pool. Yeah, it does seem a little bit harder than before. I mean, we can look at last year, pulling that one up real quick. And last year, starting for the Nomad one was 4.82. So yeah, definitely, like I said, a pretty big jump of about 0.5 star rating. Yeah, pretty much. Other than Sadly, that, uh... this week, we don't have the main map pooler, www, aka yeah. Connor. He is not with us this week. He'll be with us every other week, I'm pretty sure. So he can't give us, you know, the cool little inside information about every single map. Yep. I can say, though, that this is Black BN's first CWC map. Yeah. Never seen them before, which is great to see new mappers in CWC. I mean, Black BN has been around for a bit. Yeah, but, Tycho uh, mapper, primarily. Yep, exactly. Kind of transitioned over to Catch, I think, a few years ago at this point. Does them both now, and it's good to see him branching out even into the World Cup for our mode as well. Yeah, and I mean, looking at the map, this is what you would expect from them very standard, comfy anime mapping, pretty much. So, a little stream section here in the build up, but nothing too crazy. It's gonna be 9.2 on the AR, it's kinda low, but it's kind of also what you would expect for the star, star rating. So it shouldn't be too uncomfortable, even if you don't like playing low AR that much. Yeah, it's definitely not that low AR for a Nomad 2 of this round. Or a Nomad 1, sorry. Not a small yep. little wiggle there, but you can definitely stand still that. I can at least see it now. I can see that you can stand <laughs> still. You can see what's happening on the screen. It's like, that I can see clearly now. <laughs> the yeah. rain is gone, you know what I mean? That's crazy. Can Some of these 1-4 hypers are a bit challenging yeah. though. I was about to say, small, small diff spike before the third Ki here. With some of the triangles especially. But still, it's no matter what consistency, what you would expect. I don't think no one, anyone is going to be really, really surprised by this. Ooh, these, those snapbacks are a little harder. Yeah. That one was definitely a little bit harder to stand still because it was the way that that one four repeat was angled makes it so that way you have to move back into it. It was angled to the out to the inwards way, so a lot harder to stand still on that one. Yep. And to answer the question in chat, every specific in the 
The WC pools are customs. Yep. And quite a long spin at the end to maybe separate teams because you could definitely see a six way FC on this. For sure. Uh, number two, on. though. Yeah, map number yep. two. Another new mapper, I believe. Yep, exactly. It's gonna be It's Boss Time Dude by Aetheral, mapped by Malai. Malai's first appearance once again in CWC. Quite a very, quite a new mapper, actually, too. Yeah, very new. But I believe they here. only started, like, maybe even less than a year ago. Or yeah, about a year so. ago. I think so. I definitely. remember I looked at some of their maps very recently and they were like, it's pretty good, you know, very good for a newer mapper. And to see them debuting in CWC, very good to see. This one's gonna be a just very slightly higher AR. You can see already a bit more technical than the previous pick. Yeah, a bit more technical, a bit more mechanics focused to Just a bit overall harder but shorter is the theme here. Harder, more notch density too. Because fairly higher BPM. But still, nothing too unusual here for number two of this stage, I would say. Definitely a bit harder than last year from the looks of it. It's quite, you know, the, the hyper sliders in the first section. Maybe, maybe we can throw someone off. If you're not careful, definitely has the potential of doing that for this map. Decent amount of spinners I've seen as well. Oh, and this guy actually spikes kind of hard, I would say. Yeah, a lot of different spacing changes that you can see here. Usually, you don't see these kind of spacing changes within a specific anymore nowadays. Usually, everything is kind of just uniform standard spacing but this one even the sliders are slightly dis different sv between them which is pretty cool to see yeah it's a bit more free flow maybe you're reminding you know it's not kind of like a same. laser map but I yeah don't think yeah it's done a laser also i do want to give a quick shout out to laser as well there used to be a bug with mapping on laser where every time you test played a map it would be a big huge audio and just it would be a mess but now Thanks to the newest update from Peppy, it has been pushed and fixed, so anyone who is thinking anywhere near remotely about mapping catch, please, please, please go give laser mapping a shot. I think it is in the state where I can probably endorse it myself, where you can probably give it a shot. You won't have too many major issues. Maybe there's a few smaller issues here and there, but I think it's definitely worth a shot going through and seeing just how it is, especially with the newest fix being pushed, I believe it was like yesterday, where it got fixed. So, thank you, Peppy, for fixing laser for us, the editor. And oh, heading to sliders. number three. Also, oh, small note: this is actually what the skin looks like without the combo colors, and this is what we should be seeing in match. But uh, it's gonna be Karut. It's it's a, it's a complex name. I'm not gonna lie. It's yeah, 068 over a Yuri IO committee, even PGM. It's a blue archive song, and it's gonna be the gimmick peak of the pool. Yeah, and speaking of laser, this map is one of the maps I'm almost certain is made in laser because I know Soliloquy has definitely been a laser mapper for the most part. So, just goes to show you can actually even still make World Cup maps with laser, even in its current state. Yeah, I would not be surprised. For sure, you can tell. This map is a bit more unconventional from what we've yeah, seen. Yeah, the AR is not too low, so it is still pretty beatable for pretty much everyone at this stage, I'd say. Yeah, it is. This is going to be an interesting map. I think it's... last. I remember last year's map and it was quite a different style from this. This seems a bit more consistent, but also consistently more technical, maybe? Yeah, for sure. We'll be testing the control at quite lower AR. Some of these sliders, which are going to be kind of hard to 
fully got, I think. Yeah, some of these snaps as well are very tight. I think these are like 1 6 hyper dashes for the most part. Which, it is pretty tight, especially for this round. Like, you see that one, that little, I think it was like 112 purple into a tight hyper dash. It's very hard to be able to catch precisely, especially with the drop ins afterwards. Yeah, and especially at that AR. But that's gonna be it for the Nomad specifics. Moving on to the convert of the pool. It's gonna be any other way by Boom Kitty, mapped by Auto Fanboy. Okay, yeah, this is. <laughs> I had. <the> convert. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it is a convert, but it is an edit of a convert, and that's why it's uploaded by Auto Fanboy. This one, very glad to see edits being in the original map of this one, I believe. I think it's ZellyCZ. I don't know how I pronounce that, I'm sorry. I don't know standard mappers that well, but credit to them for the original map. Again, very happy to see edits being used. Edits, I think, have so much potential. And yep. being able to fix these one or two little awkward patterns goes such a far away and being able to pull converts. This one can be mostly slider based I think so far with the occasionally jumpy patterns which I think is probably what we're going to be seeing throughout the whole of the World Cup for the Converse slot. Yeah it seems a couple of the Converse from last year were kind of this style but you know less I mean more difficult. So keeping the same vibe but definitely quite a couple of tight spacings you can tell. Some very far 1-1 one, one spacing as well, which definitely promotes reading. Even though it is only 9.3, you can definitely see some players who are not as experienced, especially on the round of 32 pool, miss on some of the 1-1 one, one far gaps. Which is pretty much whenever there's a big break between two notes and it kind of goes all the way on the other side and you're like, ah, yeah. why did I miss that? that you definitely see some misses on this kind of map. Like right there even, for example, on 500. I know somebody's going to miss it. Somebody's going to do it. All right. yep. And a couple of things to note, the changes to the original converts were changes to the memory jump, uh, one tight dash that was removed, and the offset was fixed to be accurate. So, yeah, it should be good. It feels kinda long. I don't know if that's because the other maps were kinda short. Maybe. I mean, it isn't that long. It's 245. No, it's not that long, then, really. Yeah. Let's say, yeah, that's what you would expect from a convert at this round. Yeah, honestly, very solid convert, I'd say, myself. I think the map pool team did a pretty good job, at least, of picking this one, in my opinion. Yeah. It's not too one-dimensional, like... Some of the converts maybe were last year. So it's great to see. Moving on to HD1 though, it's gonna be Vpop by Lindsay Sterling, mapped by Dapolizatos. Yeah, gonna be having AR9 as the hidden one. Nothing too, you know, crazy for the hidden one. Yep. Maybe it's not something that all the players want to play, but it's the AR9 HD consistency. Oh, I'm, I'm pretty sure the next one is what people won't want to play, the lower AR. I mean, uh, it's just HD at this point. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you're, you're not wrong with that one. <laughs> but it seems like we might be getting a trend with these kind of alt-style hidden ones, where it's between like 120, 150 BPM. And it's more so about your control. That's what this one is definitely remind reminiscing of. A lot like the qualifier hidden one, actually. Just definitely a lot easier than the qualifier yeah. hidden one, you can see already. But just some nice little wiggle control already in this one. Yeah. Lots of 1 1, 2, and yeah, consistency HD. Honestly, it's not that easy, I think. As a consistency peak. Yeah. 
I mean, if you nine. struggle with BPM control, you're yeah. probably gonna have a hard time on this. And I was just about to say there's no 116 doubles, but I saw 116 <laughs> doubles. They're, they're here to curse everybody. But I mean, those seem very, very tame at least, which is, yeah. is a sigh of relief to a, a lot of people I know. Quite a lot of K-sections also from what I see, which obviously impacts the reading with HD. Other than that, yeah, pretty consistent. I think this type of map might be the scariest of in, you know, early tournament. Because it's you know something that most people can play, but it's also something that in match can go really wrong. Yeah, and even honestly, the better players in the tournament, they can definitely struggle on this because 128 is a BPM where it's not necessarily too high, so you can find yourself going just a bit too fast on a lot of these small little wiggles, and then you just miss, and you're like, "Wow, how did I miss?" Yeah, and then you end up realizing you just went too fast, and. You know, it might be even better for some people, just if they're not as good, they can maybe do better on this than some of the better players, just because they're not used to that BPM control change that they're usually used to. Yeah, that's just not something people think about a lot, I think. Just the fact that low BPM with this type of patterns can be kind of hard to consistently duck. Yeah. But going to the last J section, I believe, Spikes up a bit. Yeah, I think it was a little more dense than the previous courses. Yeah, seems like it. A lot of the walk spacing wiggles that we saw prior, I think, are more dash spacing in the, this course as well. Yeah, that was HD1. Into everyone's favorite HD2. It's gonna be Yosei no Kiri by Kikyo, mapped by Xerox, a name we are quite familiar with with these HD early picks. Ba 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 ba. That's all I have to say about this yep. map. But Xerox is definitely very well known for mapping the lower AR hiddens, like you said. I think this is like. I don't know how many years he's been doing it. He's been doing it for a long time and he's always had some very consistent, very good lower yard maps, especially for the earlier rounds. And he's back here again, returning to us with another one. This one has some very tight spacings that are like high snaps, like yep. one of these snaps, I think they were, between the dashes, which is pretty hard to time overall. And some of the main feature lines. is gonna be the lower yard for sure. Yeah, no, this map is looking kind of scary, honestly, on low AR. Oh, these, those little quads, the yep. four stack notes. Oh, those are going to be brutal for some teams. You have Even to stance the, them perfectly. The weird flowy triangles. It's not something that you play a lot of. But yet, yeah, definitely a lot of different snaps on the map. So, kind of a reading test on that, of the variety. And yeah, the quads again. This is scary. On low AR, you really have to position properly. Oh yeah. And even some of the dash spacings seem to be a bit yeah, they look far. tighter. Yeah. Eight point three is not too low, but for this type of map, it's. Still definitely kind of scary. I would say, especially compared to last year's HD2 on round of 32, this is like a big step up. Yeah, I think it is definitely a little bit of a step up, which I mean, you can expect year yep. to year. Oh, I yeah. little know in the middle, I saw what you did there. <laughs> Who's gonna miss it? Somebody's gonna miss it. I uh, possibly. But uh, that was HD2. Moving on to the HR pool with HR1.
It's gonna be Ironical Parade by Risa Yuzuki, mapped by oh. Connor and Yoshi, the two head coolers. <laughs> I like the Are difficulty you happy name. About Oh, yeah. Dude, like two out of them. two? I like this. I'm happy already. You like this? Yes. <laughs> yes. Was like we always need more receipts. Yeah, yeah. Please, more user visa. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's gonna be the consistent CHR pick. Quite comfy, as you can see once again. Uh, this CS is not very high. It's 3.8 before HR, so it goes up to 494. So still below 5. It's quite comfortable, definitely. And going by the songs, I think the map should be what you would expect with consistency, but yeah, maybe a bit of a focus on streams and 1-4s. Yeah, it seems like this one's probably going to be your average rain with a few hard rock patterns is what I would assume. Because the star rating is pretty high with hard rock uh, 5.02. Yeah, yeah, some of these snaps that you saw, like that one 1-4 one snap mm -hmm. into the anti-flow 1-2. And that double one four hyper dash, that's just not rankable in range usually. That's what hard rock does to this kind of stuff. It's definitely a little bit harder than your average range with the hard rock. Yeah, but it still feels like a nice introduction to HR randomization oh, yeah. on the patterns. It's not too tough. It's what you would expect, but with some messed up patterns by HR. Which is see because it's part of the HR system. There's a little wiggle there too, I saw. Yeah. I can see quite a few teams struggling on this, especially in round of 32 where yeah. not everyone might be able to read AR10 that well. Ooh. And this, I think, is definitely a big step up from last year. I don't even remember what last year was, but it's a step up. Well, I'll, I'll just year, say it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to remember. It was oh, it was the it was the great the Connor map with Cassidy in the background. Oh yeah, I remember cool. that one. Yeah, it was a good map. Oh, the Cassidy map, yeah. Yeah, quite a different style for sure. Oh yeah, huge shift up in style. And honestly, I think it's for the I don't know if it's for the best or for the worst, but it's definitely a big shake up. We'll have to see what the Hard Rock Two brings for us in terms of you know what kind of map style we're going for. I'm assuming they go for smaller circle, hard rock too. Yep. Would be expected because this is fairly low CS for HR. Yeah, 4.94. And looking at the length, I think it's exactly the same length as... Oh no, it's it's shorter actually than Nomad 1 and HD1, but as you would expect. Yeah. It's the consistency pick. 324. Still, we're not going into two long maps. We don't have any 4 minutes maps. Yeah. Which I believe I think... Connor last week said it's going to be mostly shorter than qualifiers yeah. throughout the rest of the tournament because qualifiers, you kind of want longer maps mm -hmm. to see how you do overall. But in a match, a little bit shorter maps are nice. Yep. So, yeah. going with HR2, Fate by Amidst, Map by Notary. And it looks like it's going to be kind of a precision peak. Yeah, 5.72 circle size on this one. A little bit smaller than the average at this level. And if you're not quite familiar, Notary, otherwise known as Momo X. Yep. Very experienced mapper at this point. This and one definitely tight on the reading. Yeah, from what I know, this map in the first half is a lot like last year's HR2, which was the GBH yeah. map, if you remember. Which was just a reading a reading check with very linear mapping. But it should shake up into more different patterns in the second half. Yeah, transition more from a reading pick into, you know, this kind of precision pick where how well can you place your notes on these kind of sliders. Yeah, so far though, stays relatively linear. I think it's not, this type of map is really stressful to play in match. Especially low BPM HR. Oh yeah. 
mean, low BPM HR is always just going to be very brutal, no matter who you are. But you don't have his 710 combo, as you can tell. Do we have a spin trap? I doubt it. There's no way they do it to us. Nah, no. Yeah, they do. Oh, that was, that was pretty though. far on the right. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'm a little concerned about it, but I think it was pretty fine. But if, if it's the only one you have to remember, it's gonna be fine. Yeah. But yeah, this guy, the same as the other one, kind of more precision based, with the sliders. And that was HR2, the precision pick. Going into DT1, Salamin Salamin by Bini, mapped by Crowley and Rusty. I'm so happy to see Crowley. And you know, I saw on Twitter this morning, I was like, what does Bini Crowley mean? I saw that it was his <laughs> username on Twitter and well, I guess I know now. <laughs> And you know the GIF he's been spamming in the World Cup server? It's oh from this group. I think it was a little teaser. Of course it is. This guy's a fanboy. He's a fan. <laughs> but yeah, you, you know, fun fact, it's actually the first Crowley appearance in CWC. No way. Matter. That, that it has is. to be... It is. No. I it remember is. playing Crowley map so much. You, you know, you went, no, 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 no. I there mean, is no way. My notes say <laughs> so, and I would be inclined. Maybe to custom leave. map, I think. Yeah, custom map. Yeah, yeah custom. custom map. Okay, yeah, custom. Okay. Yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah, custom. Yeah, map. I was like, I've been yeah, yeah, traumatized. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, custom but, map definitely makes more sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's gonna be on air eight flat. No, eight point three actually. Kind of a consistency peak once again for DT1, as you would expect. And it kind of feels definitely like a Crowley map with more of a free flow style. Yeah, this one I think is also pretty dense overall. Like, I'm noticing a lot of these streams, and it's pretty dense for even a DT at this rate stage. Yeah. Definitely not that linear of a map compared to last year's dirty map, I believe, in DT1 it was. It yeah. was way more straightforward. This one has a more, a way more complexity and density, as you can tell. Yeah, even like those vertical patterns right there, yeah. those are very hard for lower rank players to even just be able to consistently hit. It requires a lot of tap control. For sure. But it's interesting because, you know, Crowley Rusty is kind of a pair of mapper that really don't have the same mapping style. But seeing them I together. Think they complement themselves well, though. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. It's quite different, but it works well together. And the thing is, I think most people recognize Crowley with more of his, you know, his wonkier stuff, but when yeah. he does more, like, normal mapping, I guess you could say. It's definitely a lot more in line and very consistent compared to some of his other works. Also, I'm surprised we're seeing this song back here again. Yep. It's been a while since I've seen this song. Yeah, it's gonna be Spiyuki Magi Magic by Michi and Asuna Miku. Map by Yoshi Green. Well, it's not the first Miku map by Yoshi Green. Yeah, yeah, last year was Friedman on DT2. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna be a swing map, as you can already tell. Yeah, this creepium is also, and again, very high for DT. Yeah, this, this one, though, one is, like you said, the swing map. So a lot more different snaps than you might be used to on DT. Yeah, honestly, this is kind of different from what you would expect. 
has a DT2 here. Really, you know, you have the control picks, and I guess this is also a control pick, but in quite a different way that we usually see. Yeah, a lot more focused on your dashing in this one. Because you can see just these, I think these are 1-6 dashes between them. They're very, very easy to miss. Yeah, and given the game, you have to make quite a lot of quick, small adjustments. It's easy to, you know, overshoot a slider, maybe. Yeah. That's definitely for sure. And I saw, like, a little wiggle as there, right, well there. I think that was, like, maybe 160 quad, I think? I don't know. It's something around there, from what I'm looking at. And this is also definitely going to be playing a part in this being kind of uncomfortable to play. I don't think I've seen a break yet. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, I think so too, yeah. This one's going to be really brutal. Just keeps going. Yeah, even in this calmer section before the main chorus. Like, it's still just keeping up. All oh, those spacing. Wow. <laughs> oh. oh, we're gonna see some chokes at the end, I think. Yeah, definitely a very hard map, in my opinion, for this round. But I mean, hey, if you're a good team and you want to show it, I think that's your pick, personally. Yeah, for sure. But we do for have sure. one more double time map. It's gonna be DT3. Yeah, it's gonna be Dread of the oh, Grave, it's... More Fear by SB Uni, mapped by Yuin. Yeah, and we were saying the other maps were dense. This one's even denser. This one is just pretty much a constant one for a stream with some one half dumps in between. Oh, yep. Oh, incorrect. I'm correcting myself. It's Yuin and Moru. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yuin, another newer mapper, I think, for the World Cup scene. I yep. don't remember if Moru had maps last year. I think it's he had was one for last year. Him. Yeah. So, good to see. Newer mappers getting the chances for the earlier rounds for CWC this year. Yep. That's really, yeah, kind of a stream pick and control, and it is actually a Numineko song. We still have the spirit of Numineko oh DT in the pools living on, even in CWC. And yeah, I mean, it's kind of a staple, but at this level of play, usually you don't really see this type of map that much. Yeah, because I would definitely think so. Yeah. There definitely just doesn't exist that much, that many maps of this style, of this difficulty. So the thing really is, we, yeah. I was gonna say, overall, this DT pool is a huge step up from last year. Yeah. Last year, we had platter DT still, by the way. We had two platters in DT pool last year. This year, rain, rain, rain. And that is honestly such a huge step up. I think it's about time, personally, that we've had DT take a bit of a step up. Maybe it's a little bit too much with some of these patterns I'm seeing in between these maps, but I think it's a necessary step for the future. No, it's great. Things are changing. At least we're not afraid to see the changes. Oh, yeah. I think it's something great that the pooling team is doing, trying you know, new stuff and Maybe upping the difficulty is something that players have been asking for a long time, and it's just great to see it. Yeah. But uh, going into the tiebreaker of round of 32... You got Mixed Mod! Oh no, it's, it's Mixed Mod, my bad, <laughs> never mind. Yeah, well, never mind, yeah, it's Mixed Mod, it's gonna be Beery Beery by Yuasobi, mapped by Spectator. Spectator. Back on the CWC custom map pool team is great to see. Yeah, this one's gonna be the Air 9 mix mod. A little low. Some of these patterns definitely do look pretty challenging, honestly. This one looks like it pretty much could be just a Nomad 3, and it'd be pretty yeah. fine, in my opinion. Okay. So, definitely gonna be pretty hard, I think. Yeah. So, reminder it's pretty much forced. Three mods on this. I mean, one no mod, one HR, one HD. Yep. And it's going to be labeled as the consistency pick of the mixed mods because it's kind of longer, you know, it's three minutes and kind of consistent. And I think it's going to be probably harder on HR, I would wager. Eh, I 
don't know. Some of these snaps are tight with hidden. These one for hyper dash yeah, pretty strong. But I saw a really cool pattern that I wanted to point out. There was like this weird stream that went from the left to the middle to the right. I've I haven't seen anyone do that pattern in I don't think I've ever seen it. Like that right there. Yeah, yeah, that. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I just did the Leonardo DiCaprio a little point thing, you know? <laughs> it was like that pattern is so cool. I haven't seen people do that. Wow. So thank you, Spec. I mean you just widened my horizon a little bit. <laughs> but yeah, some great. of these snaps, like these one fours are gonna be really hard to read with hidden, I feel like. Yeah. Probably. But, like, I personally think hidden might be harder on this map, but I don't know. I think it's pretty oh. overall balanced, I'd say. Yeah, I would say so. But it's fairly consistent, you know, the spacing is everything, it's very clean. Yeah. So at least there's not the messy factor in no more than HD. Oh, Ain't no here way this guy just said Leonardo who <laughs> gonna disown you. Oh no. I s I'm seeing Bunner in the chat saying this plus HR is probably the most terrifying pick in the pool, so. Maybe there's some stuff that happens with HR actually. <laughs> I can see that, map. yeah. Maybe some of the spacings kind of become very tight. It could yeah. also happen. You know what would be really cool is if for mixed mod in future years, what if we had like one hard rock and one hidden, one no mod replay all going at the same time? That would be sick. That's, That's gonna be good. my personal <laughs> suggestion for next year. That would be sick. I know some turners have done it. Kind of a mess with the overlay and everything, but... Uh... Yeah, I'm gonna go into tourney feedback <laughs> <laughs> right after this stream and put it there. Gibbs. But yeah, that's Mixed Mod 1. I'm going into Mixed Mod 2, gonna be Gibsitronic by M2U. And actually mapped by Mr. Binking, also first time seeing them in CWC. Yeah, another newer mapper. They've been dabbling in mapping as of the past about a year or so, I'd say. Yeah. Like you said, it's gonna be a lower AR. Actually, we do have a hidden replay. So, hey, I guess we do have hidden replays. <laughs> so. yep. It's gonna be very reminiscent of last year's M2U Mixed Mod. <laughs> it's a different song, but very similar. The Yoshi map. It was also low AR. This is gonna be 8.6, so probably intended to be harder on HD. And usually this type of map plays really well on HR. This isn't too much of an issue, but it's kind of low AR HD. Overall, doesn't look too scary, I would say. Even for HD, which is supposedly the hardest mode on this. Yeah, honestly, it looks very, very tame. This is something that I think you would maybe even see, like, last year in the Hidden 1 or Hidden 2 slot. And I think it's slotting pretty well, honestly. Yeah. Overall, it seems like a very clean map. Some smaller, lower BPM movements at 125. Not even that fast, even for lowering players at this stage. Yeah. All these movers very, very comfy, is what it looks like. Yep, quite. I wouldn't expect this to be necessarily harder with HR either. I can see some displacements happening on like these 1 6 bursts, I think they are. Yeah, 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 that's maybe the only thing that would be scary. It also depends on how many sliders you use, which I think is mostly sliders on these one half notes here. You can tell based on the skin, I'm pretty sure. The displacement shouldn't be happening in parts like this, where it's mostly just sliders. Some small wiggles though in this section and a bit more density, which won't help with HD. But somebody's missing the ending though. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> That was Mix Mod 2, and now for the actual tiebreaker. We're gonna see, be seeing Zinover by Sparks, mapped by AFB alone. It's just an AFB only tiebreaker. 
surprised we don't get a collab tiebreaker. Usually we get the collab yeah. tiebreakers this time. It's gonna be AFB alone on the tiebreaker. One of our map pullers this year. It's gonna be just yeah. over 5.5 SR, or 9.4 CS4. Relatively standard for a tiebreaker of this round, you could just assume. Yep. Um, usually with AFB, you don't have any bad surprise. It's fairly clean mapping. But I know this song has kind of a lot going on with rhythm changes and different styles. And yeah, that's what we're going to be seeing here with this section, quite different, maybe more leaning towards the tech side. Some of these walks on the doubles are kind of scary. Yeah, and also a quick thing to note, this is a original song from the IGTS Showdown yep. 2022, Intermediate Global Taiko Showdown. So, huge shout out to them. Amazing song from them. And fun fact about AFB mapping tiebreakers, ever since we went full customs, uh, AFB has map mapped all the round of 32 tiebreakers. <laughs> really? Yeah. I mean, yeah, when I think about it, yeah. Yeah, it makes... I mean... Yeah, now I think about it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's all I can say about that. It's like, <laughs> yeah, I, yes. yeah, yeah, that's true, that's true. Oh, let me look at who mapped last year's round of 16 tiebreakers. That's who's going to do it this year, for sure. Alright, let's see. Was Yoshi right, and so Creeper, Creeper I think? Yeah, Yoshi and Creeper. Alright. Yeah. I know who's gonna be mapping it. it was a nice one. Carmina was good. Yeah, it was a pretty good one. We're gonna get a Dika background on it too. It's gonna be glorious. But looking at the map, it's kind of a lot of different sections going on actually as we speak. Lots of different styles. I mean, it's it's to be expected with these songs mapped for GTS, if you're kind of aware. Yeah. They're commissioned for the tournament as tiebreaker songs, and they ask the artists to put a bit of everything in there. Yeah, and so usually these the make for just very, very good tiebreakers with pretty much every skill set that you can think of. You can see a bunch of rhythm changes in this, different types of rhythm. Changing from different BPMs, I'm pretty sure, yeah, 160 to 240, the average being 180. Different changing BPM sections, which makes it all the harder to actually just keep up with it and stay consistent. But it also gives players a chance to, you know, shine that they're really consistent on this kind of stuff. Yeah. But honestly, looking at it, I think the good players. Oh, that was. That was, that was pretty hard. <laughs> That was I think the good players need to hit that one for sure. That's true. I was about to say, good players Ooh. shouldn't have too much of a trouble oh, eating wiggles. everything, Ooh. but Ooh. this section is actually spiking up quite a bit. That don't look like round of 32. Mm, that's... Kind of a That spike. looked like a little bit higher than round of 32, but I mean, it's the tiebreaker. I'll, I'll let it slide a little bit. Hey, we want that. We don't want full yeah. in the TV. Definitely not. Getting a little spicy here. I like it. I like it. The map definitely seems to be ramping up as we speak. Yeah, only about a fourth left to go on the map. Ooh, those verticals are definitely yeah. going to catch the off guard too. Some impact blows too and wiggles. Yeah, I believe this section is also just about 180 BPM. Just looking at it, thinking I don't have the map on me, so I can't really tell. But I think it is the 180 BPM section where those wiggles are mostly happening, and right here as well. Oh, it's time for the end. What kind of crazy pattern are we getting here? We're getting a BPM increase, I feel like. Yeah. Definitely is a bit of an increase. Imagine the nerves, by the way. Playing yeah, Tiebreaker in the song just starts doing this to you. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. let's go. Oof. Is, it, or is this kind of hard for 5.5 stars? 
There's a little bit of a fake <laughs> SR, I think. Yeah, I think so. But I mean, it still seems within the realm of possibility for a yeah. lot of players on the stage. And I think if you're getting to the tiebreaker, you deserve a little bit of an extra challenge after all for those sure. matches. So that's going to conclude it for the round of 32 map pool showcase. Bit of a yep. banger if I say so myself. Honestly, looking at it, it seems fun. It seems yeah. fun. And I mean, looking forward to seeing how players play on it. Also, the difficulty increase is, in my opinion, a very nice thing to see. Last year, we had a lot of people speaking about how it was kind of too easy and everything, and we got lots of upsets because of that. I mean, maybe it was kind of a fun thing to, to watch as a viewer, but for the top teams, it was kind of scary too. This time it will be a bit different, we'll definitely see a bit more difference between the lower CD teams and the higher CD teams. But still not that bad. The lower CD teams have also kind of improved, so they should be able to play this comfortably. Yeah, I think the, the lower CD teams don't have a chance to shine on this. Hopefully we'll get to see some good matches. Speaking of which, I believe the schedule is already posted I think so we'll have to see how that goes but always gonna have some reschedules in there so don't rely on it too much so it's gonna yep. be rescheduled until about Thursday 23:59 UTC but I think that'll do it from us here yeah I think so thanks everyone for joining us look forward to the matches next week and see you